Hi, my name is Trey Clark. I'm an AI ML specialist at AWS. And in this video, I want to take you through how to use Streamlit inside of Amazon SageMaker. I find that using Streamlit inside of SageMaker is a bit easier on the development cycle. And so I figured I'd make a quick video on it. As you see, I have a user that I set up for this. So if you haven't seen SageMaker in a while or haven't used it in a while, there's been an overhaul in terms of the user interface. So notably, SageMaker Classic is the sort of original version, the classic version. And now you're able to use a JupyterLab as well as a code editor. And so I'll show you how to use this for SageMaker Studio Classic, JupyterLab, and I'll actually go back out and show you for SageMaker Notebooks as well. So first, SageMaker Studio Classic. And when you click on these, you just need to make sure you have an application running. So this is the studio application. I already have one running, but if you don't, you'll have a button uh, where you can select start. And so I'll open this up. So there are some slight differences in where things are placed depending on which of the development environments you're using. And you'll, you'll see that. Essentially, there's a change in the address of where the Streamlit apps will live or be deployed. And I haven't opened this in the, for a while, so let's see how long it takes. Oh, okay. Not too bad. So now the instructions specific to SageMaker Studio Classic, what you're going to want to do is install Streamlit and then you're going to need the address of where this Streamlit application will live. So I'll start uh, with a terminal and it's important that when you're installing Streamlit and when you're going to perform Streamlit run, you go to file, go to new and go to terminal. Right. This is in contrast to if you're in, working in a notebook in SageMaker Studio Classic, don't start a terminal from there because that's not the, the same thing. And here, I'll just make sure it's still installed. Oh, maybe it wasn't. Well, I'll let it install. And this should, okay, there we go. <clears throat> we have it installed. And now just to make sure it's there, we can stream hit stream hit hello. Right now it gives you two addresses, right? Your internal and external. This is not where you're able to access it through SageMaker. So for that, you'll need a separate URL and I'll show you that now, but just in general, it'll be your domain, your studio domain ID, your region, and then there'll be some, some pieces here and I'll copy and paste that. So the address and I'll actually duplicate this will be again, domain, and I'll, I'll show you where to find this domain as well, your region. And now instead of the slash lab, it will now be available in slash proxy. Oops, that is not the correct spelling. So slash proxy. And then there was a, an, a port number given 8501. And that's the folder it'll be available under. Okay. And I, just need to proxy 501 and the slash and the icon looks good. So then it'll take us to our page. And the thing to keep in mind 
is that let me stop that for a second if you were to do streamlit run and then you, you get the same thing you had here if you had one an application running and then ran another application it'll automatically increment increment the port and that will increment which page this is available on okay so that's SageMaker Classic. Now let's do this for JupyterLab. And again, I already have a JupyterLab up and running for me, uh, but if you don't, you'll just need to start that. And let's open that. So this will essentially be the same with one slight change. So JupyterLab, let me actually start with, with SageMaker Studio Classic. So this has your domain ID here, and you can find that by going to your domain and looking at the domain settings, and that'll have your domain ID. So that's what signified it for SageMaker Studio Classic. In JupyterLab, now, just notice we're not using that ID, right? but our process will still be the same. So it will still be you know, all of this once, once we're running. Uh, and then instead of lab, it will be proxy and then uh, whatever port we're running on. So let's open a terminal. Make sure everything is installed yep requirements satisfied that shouldn't be a problem okay and then we can hello let's see what we come up with yep so we have an ip we have a port. It uh, looks like I already have one currently running, so it just incremented the port. Excellent. And then I'm going to set this JupyterLab default and proxy 8501. And this should bring, oh, I didn't mean to override where my terminal was, but right. And so now we have access to our Streamlit application this way. Two down, uh, one to go. And if you're still using SageMaker Notebooks, uh, you should switch over. But if you're going to continue using them, so I have an instance that I've spun up, I'm gonna open Jupyter. Okay, right, and I have an untitled and I have an app.py. Now here is a difference because if we open a terminal, this is terminal one, so that looks good. We can first make sure it's installed. That is not install. And it should give us the, the same thing here. Now, the way I've been able to get this to work or to get this to be addressable is, and I may even have it. Uh, so I'm going to use Streamlit Run and I have an app. It, it doesn't have anything except a, a title, but I'm using the commands uh, base URL path and I'm setting that to proxy, absolute, and then 8501 because it's the, the first application, but it could be set to, to whatever number. I've tested this without the absolute and have got have not gotten it to work. So for now, I'll say just use this verbatim uh, with an increment in the number. But we can run this. Oh, uh, here's here's another well, just something about your terminal, right? We always need to make sure we are in the location where our app.py file is. In the notebooks, you just need to go into the SageMaker. That's a good one. And then LS, we should see an app.py. Yep. And so if we run this, great. Again, right now it's attaching that to the base path. Ignore the 
port for a second, but let me get that address. And the key piece to note, if you're following the patterns that we have before, we've essentially had any of the you know, subdomain and domain that we had originally. And then once we got into the folders or the directories, we just trimmed off whatever was related to the lab and just replaced that with the you know, proxy 8501 folder. Here, we're gonna do the same thing, except we'll have a little bit less. So instead of the terminal, oh, and let me just duplicate this so it'll show on a, on a different page. But instead of our terminal, we'll have our uh, URL path. So still proxy, absolute, and then 8501 or whichever, whichever number we designate there. And here we are, and we're taken to that application. Yeah, it was just a the title Hello World, just to make sure it works. So the, and now we're done, right? And so I found this really useful when I'm editing applications before I'm ready to, to productionize them. The, the development process is really simple. I can hop into my, oh, I had it open here. I can hop into my notebook, I can write code, update the app.py function, and then deploy it really quickly. I don't have to send up a new instance, any of the other stuff. It's using cloud resources, you know, good to go. One caveat here is that there is a session time associated with these. So they will generally be available to you uh, for you know, the, the time you are using SageMaker. They'll be available for you know, a certain period after. The key to remember is that if they're not available, so if we had logged out of this uh, and then tried to get tried to reach this application, we wouldn't have been able to. What you'll have to do to reach this application again is just log into SageMaker Studio or your notebook, and then you'll be able to access it, and you won't have to keep up the uh, SageMaker environment. Uh, so, for example. So, oh, did I log out? Let's see. Let me see if I refresh. Okay, it doesn't tell me anything's wrong. So I, this one was for, so this is Jupyter Lab. This one's SageMaker Studio. So if I you know, exit out of this of SageMaker Studio, I can exit out of all of these. Uh, which one was I running from? here, right? I, I don't have them up. You'll still have access to this. So I can still refresh this and it will still work for a certain period of time. As long as my, my session's active, essentially. So just keep that in mind. And with that, I'll uh, thank you for your time.